Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I got a new little attachment for my horizontal milling machine, my, my Kearney Trekker Model H, uh, 3H horizontal mill. Picked it up uh, this past week. I actually made a trade on this uh, some time back and uh, went up to Tail City, Indiana to meet with my friends uh, Dan and Neil Warner who I've known for a long time. They have Whamco up there which is a machine shop in that area and uh, found out that they had this attachment for that fits my mill machine. They didn't have a machine that it fits and uh, we did a little horse trading. Uh, they ended up, we ended up swapping some stuff back and forth and I ended up with this lead attachment. So I found out about this from a viewer who had actually done some trading with Dan and Neil, uh, Dan and Neil to uh, gave this to him. He had acquired it somewhere along the way, didn't need it, uh, did some trading with uh, Neil and Dan. They didn't really need it, but they put it on the shelf. But he informed me that he had that Dan and Neil had it. And fortunately, I've known Dan and Neil for a long time. They've been good friends. I reached out to them, and like I said, we were able to work out a deal. So first off, what is it? This is a low lead attachment that goes on my horizontal milling machine. And this is the box that holds a bunch of gears that allows you to cut spiral gears on a horizontal milling machine. Now to cut a spiral gear, you've probably seen me cut spur gears before, but to cut a spiral gear, the actual gear blank has to rotate as the table is moving along to get that spiral in it. And this box basically through a bunch of change gears uh, goes it ties into the 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 the, the table, the, the, the lead screw on the table that's turning and it creates a motion in the dividing head that actually turns the part while you're going. Fairly complicated part. So I knew that this was there, but I also knew that it was missing a lot of stuff. But it is the main casting. Uh, and I, I don't know exactly what I'm getting into here, guys. I don't have a whole lot tied up in this. So, you know, even if uh, it turns out to be a boat anchor, I'm really not that out, out that much. But I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to salvage up the parts that I need or either make the parts that I need uh, to get this thing back up and going. So let's, uh, let's let you kind of look at what we got. I'm going to be kind of going through this thing, figuring out as I go. I don't, I've never used one. I've never seen one in person. Well, I guess I've seen one. I've never actually put one on or anything like that, worked on one. Um, so I'm really not sure what I'm getting into. Let's go for the journey and find out. And here comes Mary Ann to check on my progress. So let's take a closer look at this. This actually mounts up on the end of the table. There's a couple of pins and there's a couple of mounting screws here. This just bolts onto the end of the table. And uh, on that table, again, we have the, the main lead screw has a piece that comes out. It's a spline piece and it fits up inside of this socket right here. And it rotates. So as the table's turning, it rotates it. And uh, inside the box, uh, there's a, a set of worm gears that go in here. There's two worm gears. There's actually with this low lead attachment, uh, there were three different sets of worm gears that came with the kit. Now, I'm missing all the worm gears. I know that. I knew that going in. And um, that's a problem. That's a major problem. But fortunately, I know someone that has one of these that has uh, at least one set of worm gears and has the set of worm gears that I need to be able to make the gear that I'm after. So uh, while I'm definitely on the lookout for the worm gears that go in this, I'd really like to find all three sets, uh, I've got access to some worms that I can borrow. Uh, and on the back side here, there's a door that opens up. And on the inside here, you got some, a place to put some change gears. Uh, to get your gearing just right, coupled with the worm gears to, to basically gear everything down so that it's rotating a shaft that comes through here. And this shaft, and I'm missing the shaft, I think I can make that if I can't find one, but there's a shaft that goes from this to the dividing head that actually rotates the, the dividing head as you're going. So again, I know I'm missing parts and I know that this thing has been into. Uh, there's screws that are out down here on this plate. I don't know what I'm gonna get into. Like I said, this is somewhat of a crapshoot. I know that going into it, uh, but these things are pretty hard to come by so I, I, I decided to go ahead and grab it while I can and I'm hoping that I can either round up the parts I need or what have you. Now the change gears. I've got 
some of the change gears that go with this. So there were 17 individual change gears that uh, basically mount up on here in different ratios. Uh, coming out of here, you would mount these in and it would basically um, give you the right speeds up here. I've got this stack here and I found these. These actually came from my friend Ron Grundy. Uh, Ron's up in Milwaukee, used to work for K&T, has a bunch of K&T parts and I, whenever I found out about this I contacted him and I said, hey, see if you've got any of these parts laying around. And he was able to find this many of the gears. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven gears here. Originally there were 17 in the set so I'm still missing a few but I'm off to a good start. The good news on these spur gears is that I can make these. If I can't find them, I can make them. I can make them uh, on, my or on the middle machine dividing head. It does not require a leads attachment to do this because that's just a straight spur gear. I've made many of these. So, um, you know, if I don't have the ones I need for this job, I can make them. Also, my friend that has the worm gear, he has a full set of change gears. So in the meantime, until I can either find or make the ones I need, I can borrow the ones I need for the job I have coming up. So um, I want a big thank you to Ron, uh, who, like I said, dug these up for me. That's going to be a huge help. And I'll, I'll just mention real quick that Ron has a bunch of parts for K&T milling machines. He's got some other machine parts, too, for different uh, machines. If you're looking for any parts, particularly for K&T stuff, send me a message. I'll hook you up with Ron, and maybe, maybe he can help you out. So before we do anything else, I want to take this over and just make sure that it's going to mount up and fit onto my machine. So one thing I do know is I've been able to look the serial number up on this. This uh, low lead attachment was uh, made for a model, either a 2K or 2CK or 3CH milling machine. Now I have a model 3H, not a 3CH. The CH was basically a slightly improved upon version of the uh, the three CH was a slightly improved version of the older CH, so technically it's for a more modern machine. However, I'm nearly certain that this one is going to still fit on my machine. There was not a whole lot of major differences between that the that model H's and the model CH's. So, but I do want to make sure everything's going to fit. Now, the way this mounts on is uh, there are two dowel pins that go up into pins on the end of my table. There are four bolts, one, two, three, four, that mount to the table and this just kind of mounts in there. So you got the alignment pins and then the bolts that go on there. What I want to do is take these over and just make sure it's going to fit into my alignment holes and make sure that everything's just going to line up and also that this shaft is going to fit in there. Uh, once we do that, I'm going to bring it back over here to the table and start tearing into it, see what's going on because I know it's been taken apart before. I want to just check everything out, make sure there's nothing screwed up or missing inside this thing that's going to give me more trouble down the road. Let's go over to the mill machine. So this is the end of the table where this attachment mounts up on. So I've got um, an alignment hole here, alignment pin hole here, and alignment pin here. There's holes here that the screws go in to bolt it on there. There should be another screw down here. I think this cover plate is covering up another screw hole down here. I need to take this cover plate off and uh, that should give me access to that main screw that uh, will tie into, that will fit up into that spline uh, on, the, on the lead attachment. So there's just three socket cap screws holding this on. Let me pull these out. Here we go. There we go. And yes, so there's our hole, that's a through hole, a bolt comes through. There's a sh slot there for an auxiliary shaft that I don't think gets used in this, but it can be used. And this is a spline, this is interesting. We got a nut on the end and there's a little spacer and a gear in here. And I don't think that this gear actually interfaces with this particular attachment. So just for the record, 
K and T had multiple things that could be driven off of this screw, different attachments. So this is just one of the things that are on there. I don't think that this gear comes into play because this basically that whole attachment just slides up over the spline hole. Uh, there it comes. All right. Let me go get that attachment and just see if it'll slide up on here. All right. So I got that spline down there. Actually, in the wrong hole. There we go. There's the spline. And pull back out just a little bit. Get that alignment pin, alignment pin. And it's going to go up on there. Um, I need to clean these pins up so it'll slide up on there a little bit better. But it looks like everything aligns, which is exactly what I wanted to see. It's just. I'll open up, give me access. All right, that is good news. So that means that this will fit on this machine. So I'm going to, like I said, take it back over here. I noticed when I was carrying this over here, as I was walking, I heard some rattling. There's something loose in this case down here. I don't know what that is, but that may not be a good sign. Let's uh, take it back over to the bench and start taking it apart and see what we can come up with. All right, back over to the bench. I'm going to open this up. So we got the covers here. These are where the, the worm gear and, and the worm itself go into. And uh, I'm going to show a picture. This is a picture I found on, on um, Practical Machinist. It shows the worm gear sets and the change gears, that, the full set for this just so you can kind of see what these pieces look like. Um, and like I said, I'm on the lookout for those worm gears. So if anybody has anything that looks like that laying around their shop and don't know what it goes to, let me know, because uh, I'd be very interested in acquiring them. I know that there's some out there somewhere, probably sitting on shelf somewhere, nobody even knows what they go to, and I would love to uh, salvage them and uh, save them and put them back to use rather than just getting scrapped somewhere. So let's uh, pull these covers off and, and see what's inside there. So we've got some nuts here that go up on some studs and these plates are here are designed to come off where you can change those gears out. Yeah, it's just a Roof tight fit. Yeah, there's a flange on the inside that presses up inside of this. And again, that's where that worm um, goes in. You got a little bronze bushing that that rides on, as well as a, a pressure plate there to take up any movement end to end. And yeah, and there's a, there's a key up in here that that fits up onto and drives um, some other pieces in here inside this case. Uh, when I'm turning that, though, I don't see anything turning up here. I think that it should be turning this shaft, so there's something disconnected in there. And let's go ahead and take this plate off on the back. It's kind of like the other one. There's just a, you swap those, that worm and worm gear. Like I said, there were three different sets with different ratios, and you could install them uh, either way. So basically, there were six possible combinations that you could put these things in here. So you could either put the worm gear and the worm, or the worm and the worm gear. So that was two possible combinations, and then three different sets. Uh, for different ratios, and then your change gears up here gave you the rest of the ratios. Let's see. And <laughs> there's a bunch of uh, hardware floating around down here in the bottom of this. That's probably what I heard rattling. So we got some more, there's some screws, some nuts, socket cap screws. Yeah, that's a little discouraging. I, I don't know what all that goes to. But 
that's what I heard rattling around inside of there whenever I was uh, moving this around a while ago. I'm going to set all that aside. So we got, let's see, okay, that's just loose. This, this little, uh, like I said, you'd have a gear that came off of here that drove to this one, and there was another gear behind it that drove to this one. So there was four gears that you would put in here. This one is just an idler. This one should be geared into uh, this shaft here, but it's not turning right now. So again, there's something in there going on. Um, and between the different ratios, again, between the gears, you could get different rates of spinning up here on this uh, piece. It was adjustable to put those change gears on. I'm gonna just go ahead and pull that out, okay. That looks like the set screws that are cap screws that held that cover on. But this cover, let's see if I can get that to come out. All right. So what have we got going on here? There's a, a gear here. I'm noticing there's a set of bevel gears in there, which tells me there's a reversing mechanism. And there's this uh, lever here on the side. Yeah. And I bet, yeah, this is a uh, left hand and right hand. So I imagine that I, right now it was in the center position, which is neutral. So let me, uh, now it's gotten tight. So I think, let me get a wrench where I can turn that. Yeah, it's all engaged now. Okay, that makes me feel a lot better. I am going to put this back together. Let's see. But it's marked 40 right here. It's marked 40 on the top. So I'm going to assume, which is probably dangerous that it goes in there, that those marks line up. And we got these screws here that should tighten that down. All right, that is all tightened back down. I'm confident that that's the way it needs to be. I came over and I cleaned everything up real good. I ran a reamer down these dowel holes just to clean the gunk out more than anything else. I ran some taps into tap holes and slid it up on here and it slid up on a lot better. I'm still just kind of having to use the screws to pull it in tight. So there is one screw on this side. Just a socket cap screw. And then there are two on this side. I've just got one in right now and I'm having to kind of do one side and then do the other to keep it lined up on those dowel pins. Uh, so I'll just tighten this up. It starts getting a little bit tight and I'll come back over here. And when I get done, there's a third screw that goes in the bottom. And there's actually two on this side over here. So I've got a few more to put in, but we'll get them just, these two by the dowel pins, get them snugged up first. Then the rest of them should just go right in. Well, it's looking good here, guys. I've got it mounted on the machine now, and I've had a chance to kind of play around with things and just kind of see what we're missing. So I found a picture in one of my books that I have that kind of show this thing set up. And I, I see two things that I know that I'm missing besides the worm gear and a couple of change gears, uh, which again, I can get around that temporarily, although I am looking for those parts. But the big things that I need, really the main thing is, is there again is a drive shaft that goes from right here up into the lead attachment that a worm gear goes into. So it's splined on one end for a gear to fit into. There's some type of bearing mechanism in there to support it. And then it ties in, this is just normally a crank on here this is broken on mine but there's a crank here that you could turn and that would actually turn the chuck you know in between divisions so um, uh, this is basically what drives the whole mechanism that I need uh, at the very least I need to find someone that's got one that I can uh, get some 
pictures of, some dimensions. I imagine I can make that part. I'm not too worried about that. I'd love to find an original, but I imagine I can make that part. The other thing that's missing on this is uh, there's a linkage that kind of goes down up here at the bottom. So over here, there's a lever that it engages and it moves this rod out. Actually, this disengages, I think, more than anything else. But it is connected into a stop lever over here that has some dogs that will trip the table. So whenever it gets to the end of your, your stroke, it moves this dog, this handle back and forth. And at the same time, when it hits that, it's gonna, you have this out, it will push that in and disengage the, the, the box here as well. And again, I think that's something that I can probably, you know, fabricate up if I can't find an original. It's just some brackets that mount in here and a, and a rod. Uh, that goes back to this thing. Again, I'd like to find someone that has an original that I can get some pictures of and kind of look at and uh, dimensions, all that kind of stuff so that I can see what I got to make. Now, one question I do have on my dividing head, this is a Model H dividing head. It's the same dividing head that mates with this lead attachment. But again, I mentioned this piece on the back here. This, normally it had a handle on here. Again, mine is broken. It was got broken when I got it. That would let you turn this by hand where you could manually turn your part up here in a, while you had it set with it for a, a particular division. I don't know what's going on with it, but uh, I have never been able to get this thing to turn. It's frozen up. I imagine there's some type of lock in here that's got it locked, but I can't find anything in the documentation that talks about it. I can't find anything that's obviously, okay, hey, I need to do this. Um, and, you know, I've tried putting some pressure on it without just you know, beating on it or something and damaging something. I'm not sure what's going on with this. So if anybody's got a clue on how to free this part up down here, I would greatly appreciate any advice anybody's got. Like I said, it's probably something simple that I'm just missing, but uh, I don't know what it is. So uh, I need to get that figured out as well. This dividing head, um, while it's kind of dirty and whatever, it's, from what I can tell, it's seen very little use over the years. So I don't know why this would be froze up unless there's just something going on that I'm not figuring out. Anyway, any advice on that, I'd appreciate it. Send me an email. I thought I'd show you a little bit more detail on this right here. Um, I've been studying this a little while and doing a little bit of homework and what have you. Like I've mentioned before, the, the gears, the worms, I can get around right now because um, I know someone that has what I need and he'll let me borrow. I'd, I'd love to get those parts for this, obviously, but I can at least get the ones I need to make the gears that I need. But my real hiccup right now is this shaft that goes from the dividing head into the lead attachment. And uh, you can see a picture here showing that shaft. Basically, we got a, uh, a spline coming out of this. It's one, inches, one inch across the, uh, the outside, the largest diameter, and it's a six spline pattern. And uh, you can see that it, this shaft fits up over that and basically goes through this. There's a bearing block in here and then uh, uh, your gear, which has that same one inch spline. Let me get something behind that where you can maybe see it a little bit better. Same one inch spline pattern, six splines, one inches across from uh, the outside diameter there. That, uh, that gear fits up inside of here. And actually that same gear, it fits right on there. So it's the same spline pattern. So I looked in my parts manual and this is the, this is the breakout for that whole assembly. So here's the gear. There's a little stub shaft here that's got the spline on one side, spline on the other, and it's got some bearing journals. That fits inside this piece here, which mounts inside, and you got some bronze bushings that ride here. And then it basically goes back to a spline. There's a coupler, a shaft, and a coupler. Um, and basically, I'm missing this whole assembly. If anybody out there happens to have one laying around their shop, I would love to get my hands on it if, if you don't have a need for it. Um, otherwise, I think I can make most of this. Uh, my biggest challenge that I've had so far is, is the coupler that fits up over this. I have 
no way really to machine those inside um, notches on a, on a long coupling. And I have looked and looked and looked online trying to find a six spline coupler. I can find one for one and an eighth inch across the, uh, those, those outside diameter, but I can't find one for one inch. Honestly, if I could find a coupler that fits up over this, uh, I could probably, I think I can make the rest because I can make the spline on the inside on the horizontal mill and dividing head for a gear to fit up on. I just don't have that coupler to go there. So again, if anybody knows of a source for a six spline, one inch outside diameter coupler, and uh, I, I would be most appreciative if, if someone could point me in the right direction because so far I have not been able to find that. Um, anyway, that's kind of where we are here. I just thought I'd give a little update update on that uh, because that's my, that's my whole back right now, this whole assembly. Before we get out of here, another quick update. Um, I mentioned earlier that this whole drive system down here was froze up and I couldn't figure out how to get it free. And uh, I just finally got over here and I literally had to take this whole piece off of the dividing head. And when I got down in here, this thing was just filled with gunk where the oil and stuff had just dried up over the years. I gave it a good cleaning, uh, did some other things in there just to kind of free it up. And look at there. That is exactly what's supposed to happen. So uh, the way this dividing head is, normally in normal mode, you would tighten that ring up and that, that would lock it. Uh, and that would let you rotate the dividing head like you normally do. Uh, but when you're working in the, with cutting the leads, of course, this is tied into the table. As the table moves, there's a, that rod down the end spinning. It goes through all these different gears to rotate the entire chuck. If you look, the chuck is actually moving up here very slowly, but that's what gives you that lead is by this whole thing doing. And when you back back out, this thing has got a, is really set up where there's hardly any backlash in this at all. When you back back out, you end up right back where you were. You index your to your next point, and then you go back in there and you cut that that uh, tooth, and that's going to slowly twist the chuck, and that's what gives you that spiral gear uh, being cut. Uh, so anyway, I just thought I'd show that, but we got it freed up. Everything is uh, like it should be now. And uh, I'm real excited about that. That has never worked since I got this uh, dividing head, but um, good cleaning and a good just going through it and, and doing a few little odds and ends. We got it where it is uh, working like it should be. Look there, I can turn it by hand up here. I got a little bit more leverage in this direction. Uh, and like I said, when you're not cutting leads, you just lock it in place right there and that keeps you from turning it. So thought I'd show that update. And with that, guys, I think that is going to be a wrap on this video. Uh, we've, I'm real excited, you can probably tell, to get this new lead attachment in. Yes, we got some issues with it that we got to work with. Yes, it's missing a few parts. Most of it we can get around. I got to rig up this drive shaft. Uh, if I can find me a coupler, I think I can do it. Or maybe I'll get lucky and find the whole part there. Uh, need some worm gears and worm gear sets in there. But again, I can borrow those temporarily, and but hopefully eventually I'll be able to find some. Got my dividing head freed up. Uh, we're getting really close to maybe being able to try to cut some spiral gears, which I'm really excited about. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, as always. Just one thing I'll mention here real quick is uh, I am wrapping this video up today. It is Christmas Eve 2020. Uh, this video will go live on Christmas Day, which I try to publish videos on Friday. So if you're watching this uh, around Christmas time or on Christmas Day, Merry Christmas. Thank you guys out there for uh, watching my channel and supporting me through just viewing my channel over the years. It's greatly appreciated. Um, you, a lot of you guys are have, like family to me now, even though I've not met many of you, I've gotten to know many of you through through uh, emails and messages and what have you, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, Merry Christmas, have a great new year, and with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.